I think we already y'all do a mic check. Go. Okay. One. One, two, three. Go. My mic check. Nice check. One. My mic sound. Nice check. Two. My mic sound. Nice check. Three. Are you ready? Jesus, help me, Jesus. Issues that she might have. Help me, Jesus. Confident, low. Help me. My feet are grounded. Still holding. Yes, I'm still holding. Hallelujah. That was one of our past. My feet are ground. She said that. I think so she she said, as long as I keep my feet grounded, <laughs> my body can just go anywhere. I think she missed that part. Um, she didn't know what she was doing. I don't think that was an Okay, answer. then when she's in this, we I'll let you talk about tell her that. Okay, because I'm saying that. I will because okay. she got you running wild. So listen, so we're gonna get ready. We're gonna get ready. Okay, we're gonna get ready. Joy, I'm not gonna talk about Joy because she's not here, but she's not here. That's all I gotta say. I was gonna, I was just like, you had a floor. I was like, just so excited when it's time for Red and So I was just like, you know what? Let me move on out the way so that she can say hello. But I think what I need her to do, I don't know where she's gonna get the energy to kind of bring it down, but she's supposed to do a meditation right now. Let's you know, so focus. Do you have a meditation? I was thinking about something. Can you kind of bring it on in? Does everybody glad to be here? I'm so sorry. Maybe we should. Should we pray? Yes. Pray? You pray that I'll try to get in my tag. This will be an amazing night as always. Yes, it will. So, Holy Father, we just thank you. We thank, thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you that you call us your daughters, Lord. Thank you, God. We thank you for just everybody that is attending tonight. We pray that you would just be with each person, each household, Lord. We pray that you would just allow things to work seamlessly with technology. Yes, we pray for distractions that they might have at home, that the kids yes, would do what they're supposed to do, that the dog would stop barking, yes, that the parent would stop doing whatever the parent is doing. But Father, we just yes, really God. just thank you for this time. We just welcome your presence in this space, Lord God. We pray for our facilitators tonight. We know that they've already prepared a word, Lord God, but we just pray that if there's any interruption that you would like to see happen father we welcome you and we surrender this space to you so we give you the glory we give you the praise and we thank you for this opportunity it's in your son jesus name we pray and we give you the glory amen amen, amen. amen. so i'm just going to do a quick meditation and the reason why it was really heavy on my heart because for the very first time i flew in two years and many of you don't know i've had major eye surgery so to the point that I was literally scared to get on a plane because I didn't know what was going to happen to my eye after three surgeries and may have two more coming. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just want to share a scripture, a scripture about what was on my mind. But let's um, do a quick meditation. Let's inhale. Let's exhale. Let's inhale. Let's exhale. Think about all the things that bother you today. Begin to just lay them aside, put them at the altar. Think of anything that got you at work, at home, kids, the dog barking, all those distractions. Begin to just lay them down. Christ reminds us, and one of my favorite scriptures said, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, mm -hmm. for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. And I just start thinking about each day has a trouble, but I don't worry about it because mm -hmm. God takes care of all those. I was so happy when that plane landed and my eye, I had no complications and I was just shouting, thank you, God. Thank mm -hmm. you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So all those distractions, just lay them down. Don't worry about it. He got you. In the meantime, give them praise and give them glory and give them honor. Because as you begin to do those, those worries would just go away. I guarantee you that. Let's inhale. Let's exhale. Let's inhale. Let's exhale. Amen. 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 So, yes, I got on a plane for the first time in two and a half years. So let me tell you, it was rough. Yeah. I was praying the whole time, God, just don't let nothing happen to my eye because mm -hmm. if it happens in midair, nobody can do anything. Mm -hmm. But God's like, I got you. You know how you go somewhere, you get that, that peace. Mm -hmm. The plane took off. I was like, okay, come on, God. Then the plane started shaking. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. But 
once the plane leveled out and I was like, okay, my eyes are okay. I can still see. I can still see. So then that just peace came over me. He said, I felt like he was telling me, I got you. And once he told me that, I was good. That's why I like a fool again. Thank you, God. You know what? Yeah. But in all seriousness, mm-hmm. I know we do a ton of jokes. Yes. We do like so much jokes, which is fun, right? Right. And so, but I so appreciate that meditation that you did just to help us get centered again. Right. Because I know even for myself today, it was like a day and a half. I know for a lot of people, it feels like a crunch season, a yes. busy season, they can feel overwhelming. Oof. But what I love about the meditation you just took us through is that while we're going through the day to day and it feels like a lot and it can feel overwhelming. Yes what you took us through helps to remind us that we have a hiding place, yes. right? That everything can be happening throughout the course of the day, but it is okay. And yep. actually it's encouraged yep. that we might draw away in the same way that Christ did so that we can have that time with yes. him to be able to recenter, refocus so that we're not acting out of flesh. Yes. We're just kind of, you know, hitting the ball with everything right. that comes our way Woo. so that we can recenter and refocus. So I that agree. Was really good. Perfect. So thank you. So but, thank the ladies from last week. Oh, but wait a minute. Before we thank the ladies from last week. What's happening? I don't know if y'all saw this, right? Because I'm going to go back into this. is not just for, go. like for real, for real, right? I don't know if y'all checked out my sister. I mean, if there was a way we could do a close-up, I really would do a close-up, <laughs> right? Because I don't know where sis is going after this is all over tonight. <laughs> but check out, she got the little black dress on. If y'all why don't know, I'm telling it. Why you she telling me? Why she got some going on. Why she, she telling got, my business? you know, the hair is like perfectly coiled in a different <laughs> pattern this week. Oh, she doing the flip ports. Y'all know where you go in tonight i'm not selling but we got <laughs> okay so we back we back we back we back we back okay, sorry so next week last week last right? week who did we have christian mccloney and Jeannie hall and they did you tell me esther there you go i wasn't here but i know I, but i hear <laughs> what was one any particular favorite um, ladies let me see I don't, know, if you have any I don't know if i had a particular one from last week with um esther please type in the chat I've always liked the Esther story. She stood up for her people. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm like a woman, woman standing mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. So she stood up. So that's what, that was what it for me. Stand up ladies. Ladies. Yes. No matter what the consequences, I'm going to go through and do it. That is actually you. That is you. That's you all day. Oh, don't be Oh, don't say okay. that. We're we going to bring you back. Oh, yes. So the other uh, thing before we introduce our incredible. Yes. Right. The women who sign up, who's like the first 100 women, yes. is there something that they might be experiencing in their mailbox? So ladies, those of you who went online, right, mm-hmm. and signed up for a special gift, mm-hmm. look for this special gift. Yeah, like maybe next starting week. next week. Yep. And then by next Thursday night, mm-hmm. we'll ask one of, a few of those who have the gift yeah. and we'll show it. We can bring them on the panel yeah. and let them show the gift. So look for that gift. You oh, should get it by next week. Did y'all get me one? Really? I saw it and I really liked it. I hope I got one. Um, if not, you are no longer my friend. Hold on, hold on. Um, Shannon, can you call that lady? See if you can get my... Sh- no? You know what? Okay. <laughs> okay. So tonight, <laughs> one show only. Tonight, one show. But one, one night only. 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 Yeah. One night only. Okay. So <laughs> in all seriousness, you are going to introduce our incredible facilitators for tonight, right? I'm going to try. That's the way that they have to be. Yes. Is that right? Yes. All right, go for it. So there are two ladies sitting to my right, to my left, whichever way you're looking at this thing. Do they need an introduction? I will say no. We all know them. But the first person I want to introduce and they have these nicknames, which I'm not even, I'm going to call them by the nickname. That's what they said to call them. So first, I'm going to introduce Aunt Cat Cat. <laughs> Aunt Cat Cat, that's what her nieces, niece and nephews call her. And my God, Jane. Everybody knows Kathy. Kathy thinks the praise and worship team. She's an awesome woman of God. And I can tell you a whole lot of things. Or maybe stories have them. Maybe choose them and leave them alone. We want to welcome Cat. Yay! <laughs> Put it in the chat. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Kathy. And then the other lady needs no introduction. She's our fabulous, wonderful, kind-hearted, sweet. How much more are you paying me to say him with more? Give me more. Um, lovely, soft-spoken, a powerful word has wonderful messages. Speaks truth so quietly, but when you get finished, you go like she just dropped some nuggets. How much more? Than about five more dollars? Okay, okay. Uh, I've heard every how much? A hundred. A hundred. Oh, no, I'm gonna be here all day. 
I want everybody to meet our very own first lady who's calling herself for tonight, Auntie V. Let's welcome Auntie V. Woo -woo! So we're going to be talking about the birth of women. I believe it is. Proverbs 31. Yep. Two beautiful examples. And I'm just going to let them go in. We don't know where this conversation will go, but we know there's going to be some jewels <laughs> and nuts tonight. So everybody in the chat, welcome Auntie V and Aunt Kaka. <laughs> That was amazing. That was yes. Amazing. Thank you, Sheila. Oh, yes. um, you it's in money. the mail. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. Oh, my kids had to teach me how to cash. Oh, I know how to wait a bit. So first, we just want to thank everyone, um, Michelle, Sheila, Joy, for allowing us the opportunity to come and talk. And last week, um, the presenters, they were talking about how um, everyone was paired and some of them were voluntold who, where they were going to go. Some people signed up and I think we both signed up, right? We signed up. We signed up, but we didn't know who our partner was going to be. Right. And when I saw that I would be facilitating with Miss Vicky, see, that's what I said before, Miss Vicky. I said, oh my God. I had to miss Vicky. <laughs> and then we had an opportunity to sit and talk. We went out to, to lunch. We went out to lunch. We went out to lunch and we just talked and talked and talked and we really connected. Yes, we did. And we found out that we had so much in common. We're the same age. Yes. Practically. We were in college around the same oh, time. Yeah. Yep. Kathy was in Hampton. Hampton. I was, That's right. UM, I was in right up the street, University of Maryland College Park. That's right. So we, and we know a lot of the same, same people, church friends. Church and, friends. So we are sisters. We, oh, yes, we are. And we love each other. Yes, I love we do. Kathy. I love that you. That is my sister. I love her. And we were teasing. I said, the more and more we talk, we were wondering, I'm going to have, I'm going to have to scroll down my ancestry DNA because Vicky might even be my cousin. I, I don't even so. know. Okay. She just yes. very well may be my yes. cousin, <laughs> but this is so cool. We were, we are here tonight to talk about the virtuous woman. Yes. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Yes. And um, the book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Absolutely. A lot of wisdom, um, not just for women, but for for everyone who is a Christian about how to lead, lead their, live their life um, with wisdom. Yeah. So before we start, um, we're going to blow up the chat for a minute. Oh. And I want you to share a word of wisdom that you've received that has taken you throughout your life. You can always fall back on it. It's something that um, strengthens you. Um, it can be a funny word of wisdom, but it's something that you have that has been shared with you, that you have taken along with you in your life. And before we started, <laughs> we were talking about uh, a word of wisdom that was shared with us. And one thing is, you know, we said that, you know, we're from back in the day. Yes. So we're, one, we're, yes, we're, in, we're aunties. We're aunties for real. <laughs> and um, one word of wisdom that I received from my mom was always wear a slip. Yes. You're not lying to I Yes. Know. And I was, I was saying that my mother would say the same thing to the point where I remember actually coming down the stairs without a slip yes. and being sent right back yes. upstairs to get a slip. So That's you right. did not, particularly for church, for church. You, you could not go to church without a slip. That's right. And, and you couldn't, you had, you couldn't have bare legs. You, you had, had to wear, to wear stockings. stockings. Those nurse, um, those big flesh tones. Yes, yes, Those yes. Those nurse flesh tone stockings. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. 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 <laughs> I remember my grandmother coming behind me at church, mm -hmm. lifting my dress up, saying, do you have a skirt on, a slip on? Right, I'm like, oh right, my God, lady. Right. But besides that, I, 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 um, my mother always told me to um, always be me. I can't change who I am for anybody. Yes. Just believe in who I am. And if no one accepts who you are, that's okay. 
but you're being who you are. Yes. Never yes. change who you are for anybody else. Absolutely. Michelle got something that's in the chat. Okay, you cool. Tell us in the chat? Yes, so the ladies are definitely responding to what you all are asking about the wisdom. And so Lassone said, trust God always. Leslie said, her late father said, work hard, play hard, and never lose your sense oh, of humor. Oh, that's good. That's good. Lisa said, the truth will set you free. Uh, Tangi Ellis said, action speaks louder than words. Uh, Tanona says, don't come down off your level. That's her mama said that. Ooh, like uh, that Raven said, don't let people live in your head rent free. Come on, mama, yeah. giving her wisdom. Lisa said, wear black underwear with yeah. white clothes. <laughs> That's a good one. Denise said, treat others as you would like to be treated. Kim said, no matter what you do, do it to the best of your ability. Mm-hmm. Joanne said, pick your friends wisely. Gee, frankly, we know that must be Miss Glow. Yeah. She <laughs> says, a soft answer turns away wrath and do not give into your feelings. And we'll do a couple more. Caroline said, never put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Uh, and then let's see, uh, Pat said, you teach others how to treat you. Yes. So many more. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's some good. So, so that means that we live by words of wisdom. We do. And ultimately who gives the best words of wisdom is our father in heaven. Absolutely. And the word is full of words of wisdom and Proverbs is too. He gave us a whole book, a whole book. And the thing about it is Proverbs is 31 chapters. So you can actually like read a chapter a day That's for a right. whole month and get through the whole book. And I've done that before. And it really is the thing that I found about Proverbs as a whole book is that it's, um, it is that it's so practical. Yes. So it talks about money. Yes. It talks about relationships. It talks about sex. Um, it talks about just everyday practical issues. And that's what really wisdom is. It's just that knowledge that is lived out on a practical everyday level. And that's what I, I, I mean, God is awesome like that. Yes, he he's is. not so, he's not so much God mm-hmm. that he didn't take the time to give us a whole book That's right. to, to just instruct us on practical living. Exactly. So even though we're talking about Proverbs 31 tonight, I'm so glad that you mentioned the whole how the whole book is just rooted in in, in wisdom. wisdom. And Proverbs 31 is really kind of like the icing or the, the what the cherry on top of the, the yeah, Sunday. That's right. It just ends. It just completely ties up everything that the whole book is about. And one thing I, I realized is that because we know that Proverbs was written by Solomon is one of the books. Yes. And but what I didn't realize was the words that are um, the words of wisdom that are given was really given by King Lemuel's mother. And she even says it like in the, um, I know you all read it. Didn't you read it? You read it. But the first, it says in, in verse, I'm going to read verses one and three, the sayings of King Lemuel as inspired utterance, his mother taught him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, my son, listen, son of my womb, Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women. Mm -hmm. That's some good wisdom. (laughs) Your vigor on those uh who ruin kings. Mm -hmm. So the the vigor, this is um, NIV, the vigor on those who ruin kings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she was kind of, I loosely say it's, don't be messing around with don't no be, fast women. Don't be running at running in them streets. Huh? Just, yeah, don't don't bring them home to me. You're right. <laughs> don't bring them home to me. And then when we get when we get to the actual um, verses that starts talking about the virtuous woman, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this is her instruction to him as to how to choose a wife. Absolutely. It is absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. And for me, that is refreshing, you know, because when I first um, was, you know, I was, we, we, we said we were going to do the study. Yeah. So I started reading through Proverbs 31 and I was so intimidated yes. by the Proverbs 31 woman. Yes. But when we learn and we understand through study that the, the, um, the passage is really, and it's really directed towards men as to the qualities to look for in a future wife. And so it kind of takes the pressure off of us Mm -hmm. a little bit. Yes, it does. It's not so much that we're supposed to read the passage as if, okay, check, I can do this and check, I can do this and check, I do this. Oh, oh no, I don't do this. It's more of 
of, of a celebration and an affirmation of the qualities of a wise and good woman, woman or potential wife because you can be a virtuous woman without being a wife that is right that's you can right be, yes, you, can you, can. Be a, you can be a wife and be virtuous you can be a single woman and be virtuous that's right so i just think that that's a great point that you have made you know that we and it just took the pressure off of me just to to understand that you know it wasn't it's not a checklist it was directed towards from a mother mm -hmm. to her son just to kind of say, you know, this is what you you really want to look for in a potential mate. That's right. And so um, that was good news to she me. She was spitting wisdom to she him. She really was. She, she was saying, was. this is the type of woman that you want. Yes. Now, I don't know how many of you, when you read the verses about the virtuous woman, did y'all get tired? Because I was tired. Yeah. 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 Sis yeah. was doing a whole lot. She was doing a she whole lot. She did a whole lot. And then you you said it um, about the measurement of the woman that you want to be. Mm -hmm. But just because she did all of that, if you don't do all of those things, that doesn't mean that you're not virtuous. Exactly. exactly. The level of your virtuosity does oh. not decrease. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> huh? How about that? You know? Right, right, right. So she was giving just certain points yes. about, I, I really believe these were aspects of women that she had come in contact with or, or had encountered. Yes. And seeing all of those attributes if she had, well, if she had to build a woman, but you know, God did that in the garden. Mm -hmm. And all of those attributes, I believe, were in Eve. Yes, yes, yes. I really do. I mm -hmm. believe they were in Eve um, and they followed through generation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I need to go back on something because we were talking about um, the wisdom of Proverbs yes. and we started... Um, we started to ask the words of wisdom that you received growing up. And a lot of wisdom we received were from our mothers. Yes. What we saw them do, our, our mothers, our aunties, you know, um, our Sunday school teachers, all of those women. Mm -hmm. And they were examples to us. Mm -hmm. So when, we were, when we're reading through everything that Miss uh, Virtuous, <laughs> I guess her husband was Mr. Virtue. <laughs> We see everything that she did, but I was really tired. I was tired after reading everything that she did. Yeah, yeah. Did you feel that way? I felt, well, like I said, I felt kind of like intimidated. Yes. Like I'm not doing all of this. But as I kind of began to maybe read and d dig a little, a little deeper into study, it just, I just started thinking that maybe this is just, um, a celebration mm -hmm. and an affirmation yes. of what women can do, what what who we are mm -hmm. when we dedicate our lives to the Lord and try and live our lives according to his wisdom. That's right. So it's not like we're trying to measure up and level up. It's a celebration of what of the things that some of the things that we're already doing. That we're already doing. Because we, if we look at the Proverbs 31 woman, she was working in different spheres. Yes. So this woman was working in the home. Yes. She was in the marketplace. Yes. And she was she was uh she was a businesswoman. Yes, she was. And there was another sphere that I forgot. And she just was an awesome woman. She and it's interesting, it doesn't say a lot about what she did in church. Right. Everything she did was, was outside of the, in the community. In the community. Yes, she 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 gave to the poor. This woman was awesome. So for me, I think of all the women that I already know who are already doing these things yes. every day of their lives. They're holding it down with their families and their children and their husbands. Yes. They're serving the community. They're out there doing social action and social justice. Yeah. And they're, you know, fighting for the needy and the poor and the marginalized. Mm -hmm. And then I think of women who are just boss women. Boss women. They can run a business. Yeah. They know how to make that money move. Yes. Yeah. They like Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a boss. You're a boss. I'm a boss. You hey. work. I what? make money move. So she was doing all of that. And I it almost, and it just made, it blessed me that this is more of a celebration I, of the things that we do every day as women. That's right. It's not that we have to, 
try to be exactly fit ourselves into some type of cookie cutter image. It's like, what am I already doing that is virtuous, that is that requires courage, that requires discipline in diff every different sphere of my life? Let me celebrate that. Let me continue in that. Let me build upon that. And let me take a minute and just like, Go girl. Absolutely. <laughs> and and with everything that she did, she had to have some level of wisdom in every aspect of her life. There you go. Because she couldn't be in the marketplace all day. Right. Because she still had to come home and take care of her. Now, I'm not right. trying to be chauvinistic. I'm not. But I'm saying she still had to be at home raising her children. That's right. Somebody had to do it. <laughs> and we were we were joking earlier because probably if my phone was not on do not disturb I would be getting a call right now from my husband um I'd answer the phone did you cook anything yes <laughs> do I gotta stop and get something and what did I say I'm like what did I say it was <laughs> a foodie call yeah <laughs> I get booty calls for my son. And so, Mom, right. What's in the house to eat? What's, <laughs> I, got, I got one the other day. Um, hey, sweetheart, sweetheart. You cook anything? Uh-huh. Foodie call. I'm doing I'm I'm doing it right now. I'm cooking right now. But 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 you know what? Food is already ready. Yeah. When he comes home today, go virtuous home, woman. Home, you, you got it. So ready for the ready go for the basketball game. Go. Already. You see, go ahead. I go had ahead. it all planned out. That's all, right. But I had to use wisdom. That's wisdom. Because you're a virtuous woman. Hey. And you ready. You I'm had that thing planned. What? You were ready. I was ready. Virtue. But in every aspect of her life, she still had to use wisdom. Yes. Because she couldn't tire herself out. Right. Right. Because she still had to be there. For her, for her husband, mm -hmm. for her children. Mm -hmm. And we knew that she was an entrepreneur. Absolutely. She still had to allocate her time in order to do the work mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. she needed to do in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even the, even though it seemed, her, seemed as if her life was overwhelming, she still had to make sure that she had time for herself, time yes. for her family. Yes. And this was the big thing for me. We talked about this is that I suffer from not asking for help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Because yeah. I feel that I started it. I have to finish it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I take on a little too much. Anybody out there, raise your hand, put in the mm -hmm. chat. Yeah. I take on too much. Yeah. And I wondered about Miss Virtue. Yeah. Did she do that? And then where, where is it? Did it say, it says in the word that she had handmaidens, correct? Yes, she did. So she had help. She had help. That's right. And she could accept help. That's right. Yes. And it's okay to do that. It's all right to ask for help. So sis, look, look at me right here. You don't have to take it on all by yourself. You have a gang of sisters on this Zoom. You have you have sisters who are there to help you. So don't think that you're a failure if you have to ask for help. It's okay. It's okay. I've taken this 12-step program. I'm asking for help. You have to ask for help. God will give you the wisdom. He will give you the strength you need for everything that he has put before you. So don't think that you have to go it alone because you will tire yourself out. Yeah. And then what good are you going to be to your family? What good are you going to be on your job mm -hmm. if you don't ask for help? So please don't tire yourself out. Right, right. Don't. That's wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's wisdom to ask for help. And it's in the scripture. It says, and I, I have to look it up. She strengthens her arms. Yes. So she takes the time to strengthen herself. That's right. You know, whether that be working out or going for a walk or just taking the time to maintain your own sense of being strong, your own sense of being able to um, handle what's going on in your life. That's right. Just taking the time for yourself. And she did that. She strengthened her herself. arms. She that's strengthened right. herself. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. So someone said self-care, it's, it's really, it's a good it's thing. It's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's real. It's and real. then I even, I remember um, when the Israelites were, were fighting their enemy. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, told 
um, Moses when he had his hands out mm -hmm. that they will win. Yes. But he stood. Can you imagine standing that long, holding your arms up? Mm -hmm. But thank goodness for his brother, Aaron, who came and held his arms up. Yes. You have sisters who want to hold your arms up, sis. Absolutely. You don't Absolutely. have to take it on by yourself. Mm -hmm. And I lift weights. I'm telling you, you know, when you have to do the flat, my arms hurt. I know. I said, I need to put this weight down, but I know that there's somebody who's going to spot me. Ah, yes. yeah. I got to have a spotter. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, that's it. You got to have a spot in order to help you. Yes, yes. One of the things that the lady said in the chat and wanted to share with you, you all, Costella, she has these three Bs, right, based on what you all shared. She said, I'm trying my best to keep balance, boundaries, and take Oh, that's breaks. good. I will ask for help. Really, that's really right. good. That's right. That's oh, good. but here's another thing that we talked about. When you ask for help, you have to have wisdom and discernment as to who you need to help you. Yes, yes, yes. That's part of being a wise, a wise woman. woman. And I know that there have been times, there have been times in my life that, um, you know, there are friends who are there for a season. Mm -hmm. There's there are friends who are there for a season. Mm -hmm. They can't follow you on your next to the next part of your journey. Yeah. Right. So you have to be discerning because even if you're taking on a new project, Miss Virtue is going to open up a new stand over in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of her one of her friends who have been with her all that time, you know, it was time to go to the next step. And, and Miss Virtue was going to start marketing another product. Mm -hmm. And her friend was like, I don't, I, I don't know if that's the right thing to sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I felt a little, you know, she felt a little... Is she really saying that to help me or is she jealous of me? Mm. Not that she has, but you want, you want people who you want a sister who's going to be there to support you. It's not all about what she thinks. You want someone who is going to support you yes. through all of that. And there are seasons for friends yes. in the same way. You can't take, even though we still have friends, who are with us from childhood, mm -hmm. but there are some people who are in our lives just for a season. Yes. They may be the ones who helps who help us get that contract. They may they may be the one who helps us when we um, when we're going through on our job. Mm -hmm. But they may not mm -hmm. be there for us in that for a long period of time. So that's where wisdom and I and I hope that Miss Virtue, all of the handmaids that she had, were the ones that could push her propel right. her into the place where she needed to be. Right. I think that's excellent. And like part of being a wise woman is because in the book of Proverbs, wisdom is all is usually contrasted with foolishness. Yes. And the Bible in it Proverbs um actually talks about a foolish woman every now and then. And I believe Pastor Battle even talked about this yes. in one of his sermons recently. And so in terms of being a wise woman, we also have to understand that there's some foolishness out there. Yes. Whether it comes through another woman or a man or a situation. And that's why I, I like when the young lady, she said she's putting up boundaries. Boundaries. Those boundaries will protect you from some of that foolishness. That's right. And I think that um, your point is very well taken. You know, we as wise women... We have to be on the lookout for the the, the other extreme, That's which right. is foolishness. And we have that choice every day. Mm -hmm. We can either walk in wisdom or we can choose foolishness. But we also have to realize that other people have that choice as well. As well. And we can, and it's good to kind of know <laughs> where other people are going. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And that's, I, okay, so we, we can be real here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had to stop watching the real housewives of atlanta oh, no. i know <laughs> so I, said, oh, I know oh, I mean, well i still i still watch potomac i still watch but but a part of me hmm? i don't know about all of that it hadn't gotten to the level of foolishness yet but i just didn't feel that it was i needed i at during the time I was watching, I felt I needed to watch something where women were empowering each other. Yeah, yeah. And I just didn't see that they were helping each other that much. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, we all like that ratchet part. Right. 
mm-hmm. where they come across the tape. Ugh. But then, you know, was it beneficial for me? Right, right. You I know, agree. Not that I don't watch Ratchet TV. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I, it was just a it was just a few times that I watched you know a couple scenes that I watched and I said ah yeah. this is not what I want to bring in my space I I agree Kathy I had this conversation with my biological sisters we had gone out to dinner one time and we were just talking about reality TV and I was trying to explain why I choose not to watch a lot of that I don't I I, I just don't and it's not because I think I'm better than. This is really the reason why I choose not to watch a lot of it. I honestly don't know a lot of women like that. Right. The women that I know yes. are like the Proverbs 31. Yeah. Women. They're taking care of their families. Yeah. They are working in, they are just doing wonderful things in the marketplace. They're serving in the community. They're not throwing drinks. No. Nope. They're not fighting. No. Nope. They're not calling each other. Nope. I don't know women I, like that. I don't either. All the sisters I know are like Proverbs 31. So why am I going to watch exactly that over and over again when my reality is surrounded? I know people like you, my sister, got my back. Yes. Like Sheila, Michelle. That's right. Shannon, Asha. I know women like that. I don't know these women I don't know them. who are fighting each other and calling each other all types of names. That's right. I don't know them. I don't know them either. So maybe that's... That's just my thing. That's good. Yes. That's real good. That's, that's you have I'm, to surround. What? Right there. I mean, that's tough, but we had, we had to slow this down because of what you just said. Because so many of us, my hand included, and many women in the chat, really enjoy reality TV, right? Mm-hmm. But what you just did was a mind shift. It was a paradigm shift for us. And so we had to slow it down because what you said is that that's not my reality. That's not my reality. That if I'm watching it because it's reality TV. That's not even my reality. Mm-hmm. That right there, that's a oh. whole, like, we got to, we had to sit on that for a minute. Mm-hmm. It was so Look good. Y'all, Michelle Obama, reality. Yes. There we go. Marjorie Harvey, reality. reality. There we go. The, the, those are the, Kathy Jeffries, Absolutely. reality. Vicky Michelle Absolutely. McKinney, Absolutely. reality. But you know what else <laughs> I was thinking too when I read this? I thought about Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Who do you want to become? Yeah. Do you want to become that type of woman? Or mm-hmm. do you want to become, do you want to become the woman that pleases God? Yes, yes, yes. Who are you trying to become? Mm-hmm. Are you trying to become something that you're not? You're just worried about what, what they're doing out in these streets mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. what they're portraying on TV? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or do you want to become something that's long? a character that your character is long lasting and it also pleases God. Yes. That's who I want to be because I want, I want my children to rise up and call me blessed. Absolutely. You bring it at home now, Kathy. Come on, Kathy. (laughs) And and then the, the, the section where it says that when, Um, When her husband was in the marketplace, Mm -hmm. you know, he he praised her for the works that she did. Yes, he did. I mean, it's good. Uh, My my love language is words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though when I'm cooking dinner, you know, I I put dinner on the table and I start eating. But I kind of look at my kind of like we on chopped. I'm Mm -hmm. waiting for him to say, you know, is the food going to be all right? (laughs) But when just. I don't know what he says outside of my presence to his boys or whatever, but it would just be cool to say, you know what my wife cooked for me? Do you know my wife is in it? And that's encouragement as a woman. Okay, but let me say this. We're talking about the virtuous woman and sometimes that's synonymous with married women. Mm. You don't have to be married to be virtuous. The attributes that are outlined here, it's even for a single woman. Absolutely. So you live that life if you're found, Praise God. Mm -hmm. If that's not what you desire in life, praise God. Mm -hmm. But these are attributes that every woman, every woman Mm -hmm. can, um, they can portray, they can live, they can live by. Mm -hmm. So being able to, um, for our children and those who are around our family members, our friends, our sister friends, Mm -hmm. just to say, just to honor us for the work that they see us doing. And it's really not even that we're doing something to try to, to receive affirmation. 
hey, it's just what we do. It's just what we do. It's just what we do. It is. But the affirmation is nice. Oh, it's nice. And I always tease my husband because he'll say that my love language is cash. He will say that. <laughs> he will say that. Ain't so nothing wrong with the, that. The nice, way of, the nice way of saying that is that it's gifts. Okay. So the word, I really believe I, I'm an equal opportunity love language person. So yes. any, anything. I'll take them all. <laughs> Yeah, look, all five of them just poured on me. That's right. But, you know, (laughs) I like what you were saying. You want those words of affirmation. So for me, it's like, oh, I get to go on a little, if I get a little shopping spree every now and then as a thank you, like you've done good. Mm -hmm. Here's your little gift card. Thank you. That's like, (laughs) yeah. So, yes, just receive that, take that in, just, that's that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Everybody wants to be affirmed. Absolutely. And that's why we're here tonight to that's affirm right. to you. To affirm you. That's to right. Affirm you. To affirm you. That's and to right. let you know that you are becoming a virtuous woman. You are a virtuous woman. And we're just here to just encourage you on your way. And the, uh, what I what I love is were y'all gonna say something? Oh, okay. No, I'll stick it in the oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, when when Sheila introduced us, she said that um we were the aunties. Mm-hmm. And okay, so I'm 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 resting in that area. You know, in my mind, in my mind, I still feel like I'm 20. Uh, hey, I still feel it. Mm-hmm. However, um, when you get to a time in your life that you are able to share wisdom, I'm all for it. Yeah, because we sat we sat at the feet of awesome women. We you do. have an awesome mom. Thank you. I have an awesome yes, mom. You do. And we're passing those words of wisdom on to our daughters. Yes. It's like raising yourself. You see them moving in that direction. Mm-hmm. And in in this pseudo position of auntie, being able to um, share what we have been through in our lives, mm-hmm. because there's some roads that you don't have to go down. Yes. If you receive the words of wisdom. That's the truth. That's and the truth. I love what you said, too, about reading a proverb a day mm-hmm. and letting that word settle within you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also being able to apply those words of wisdom. And in those times when you have to make a split decision and that word of wisdom just comes back to you and you're like, God, I thank you. Thank you for that word of wisdom. Yes. I didn't have to go through that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I really believe that in, embodied in all of us is the virtuous woman. Yes, I do too. That we just have to reach, you know, if that's what you, if that's what your, um, your goal mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. is that you have to be able to receive now, <laughs> being able to receive. Sometimes there are words that we don't want to hear, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but the word of wisdom, when you are, um, In the presence of a virtuous woman, a woman of wisdom, it may not be the word you want to hear. It's true. That's right. But sooner or later, you're going to realize, oh, I should have listened to what what Auntie Vicky said. Or Auntie Cat Cat. (laughs) (laughs) That's what the blessing is out of all of this. So she really has given us a roadmap. Well, she didn't really give it to us. Um, King Lemuel. Kim Lemuel's mother yeah. really uh-huh. gave it to us uh-huh. as to how how to be a virtuous woman. Right. But what else? Did you see anything else that really stuck out to you? Oh, yeah. So when you were talking about, when you were just talking, what, what just came to my mind was wisdom. What is it? Yeah. And the Bible <laughs> is its its great its own greatest commentator so the bible says that the the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom that's right and when you said this is it when you said that a virtuous woman resides in all of us that's true because as when we are born again and we give our lives to christ we have the spirit of christ living within us the spirit of christ is always reverential towards god towards the lord so we have that spirit in us that is the begin, the very foundation of all wisdom. So we don't ever have to feel like um, we don't have access to wisdom when we are women of faith in Christ. 
um, the book of James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, mm -hmm. let him ask of God That's and he'll right. give liberally without reproach. Mm -hmm. So we all have access to wisdom. We never have to feel like, oh God, I don't know what to do. Now that's true, we don't know what to do, but we know who to go to. Yes. And I think that's just a very, um, for me, that's the just the crux of it all. Where does wisdom begin? It begins in that attitude of just respecting God, yeah. respecting his word, respecting his people, mm -hmm. his teachers, those elders that he's given us, and that's where, as and we grow in wisdom, and we will find that in our lives, our lives are kind of like this. We kind of are spiraling up and upwards mm -hmm. in wisdom. Mm -hmm. So as we, you know, encounter situations and go through different challenges, and then we seek wisdom, and we pray, and we seek counsel, and we pray, then we learn and we grow, and we go up another rung in the. Mm -hmm. And so our lives are like this. We're just going. We're we're going on an upward trajectory because of the wisdom that is based in the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so happy that you said that, how every woman has that. We have that access. Mm -hmm. And I just, I feel like for me, I just want to encourage the woman who feels like, well, my past or my mm. former de decisions mm are telling me that I'm not a virtuous woman right. or I can't be a virtuous woman. And I want to say as your auntie B, the devil is a lie. Yes. 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 You can be a virtuous woman yes. today. You can make decisions today that just allow you to walk in wisdom mm -hmm. and virtue. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you that, you know, I always feel like if you all knew me when I was 16, y'all wouldn't let me be your pastor's wife. <laughs> Y'all would not, you would not. Y'all be like, oh, not her. But God is gracious yes, he and is. God is good. And he can allow you to grow in wisdom. So don't let the devil tell you That's right. that because of your past, That's right. because you did this or because you went this place or because you were with this person, that you can no longer be a virtuous woman mm -hmm. and walk with that sense of dignity. That's right. That is a lie from the devil. Your past is over. Your past is under the blood. I know Kathy is like, you know, it's under the blood. It's, it's under the blood. It's under the blood. That's and right. You can be a virtuous woman, woman today. That's right. I want to encourage you and affirm you in your virtuosity. Like virtuosity. You said. That's right. Yes. Because we can get bogged down with things that have happened in our past. Yes, we can. And then we can also we can also think that God doesn't love us for what we've been through. But if you confess your sins and you ask for forgiveness of God, he'll throw it in, he'll throw it so far away from you that he can't even remember where he threw it and you don't that's even right. remember what it is. Wow, that's right. And, that's right. And that's what the enemy, you're right. That's what the enemy wants us to do is to think that we're, that we're less than who we, God made us to be. There you go. And it even says in verse 10, it says she is for, she is worth far more than rubies. Yes. Yes. Do yes. you know there's jewelry in museums that are in cases that they're trying to keep from thieves from stealing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you, you are precious just like that. That's right. Nobody can touch your worth, your value, nobody, or your value. That's right. It doesn't come from anybody. That's it comes right. From God, and you don't don't put yourself don't put yourself someplace that God isn't going to put you. You can't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't. I want you to know just just to really uh, follow up on what you said. You have to know your worth. Yes. Yes. And to God, yes. you are worth rubies yes that's what he said you are worth yeah. rubies yeah. he said rubies yes yes i thought diamonds were but still rubies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you are worth that much to him yes precious valuable you are all of that and shouldn't we as sisters feel that way about each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We should feel that way about each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that even if if one of us fails, that we shouldn't ridicule. We shouldn't ridicule our sisters. We should be there to uplift them, mm-hmm. pick mm-hmm. them up when 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 things don't go the way that we want it to go. Right. Instead of laughing mm-hmm. or posting. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Or gossiping about it. Right, because we're dealing remember, with, yeah. remember your sister is worth rubies. We're dealing with rubies. You made a mistake too, didn't you? Right. I know you're not saying, oh, you, no. We have to be able to uplift each other. And when we see each other fall and be there to help each other. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did not see on the Housewives. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see it. I'm telling you, I didn't see you're it. telling the truth. You're telling the truth, Auntie Cat Cat. Come on now. Yes, you are. But that just really got me. We just have to really know not just our worth, but we have to we have to know that our sister friends, they're worth just as much as you are. And we don't want anything to tarnish Mm -hmm. the value of who they are. That's excellent. Excellent. We can't do that. Yes, yes. Talk about your sister's worth to each other because that's so key but we don't really have a lot of that how do we start it or how do you encourage people to start it well the reason why i think it's repeat your question sheila oh you want me to repeat it (laughs) (laughs) sheila said how can we as women start that whole system start the system of how we we respect or we um, we're able to um, speak worth yeah. to our sisters. Yeah. No, we don't. And and I think the reason why y'all know it's a in some in some circles it's a hidden competition mm-hmm. between. Mm-hmm. But we all run in the same race. Mm-hmm. 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 And once we realize it's not about competing with one another, it's building each other up. Mm-hmm. And some women have been hurt so much by other women, it's hard for them to get to that point. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But the thing, what we have to do is use words of affirmation for our sisters. And I, I, heard, um, I heard a comedian say, you know, when, um, when we give compliments, it's like we give one word compliments. When we see, if I see Michelle walking in and she has some, I say, oh, right, hat. <laughs> wear it <laughs> right right you better wear those shoes sis. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with encouraging yes encouraging yes. each other even in failure we still have to give encouragement mm-hmm. yeah and then mm-hmm. being being able to um i think we stay we stay in our own circles mm-hmm. but sometimes we have to we have to have that um that um Great commission, go ye spirit. When God is telling you, I, I've been in a position where I've seen, I've seen, um, I've seen um, a woman, and I, I see that she's is something wrong with her heart. She's going through something, mm-hmm. and being able to minister just out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. But you don't. After having a conversation, how did you know? that that's what I was going through. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sometimes the wisdom, the wisdom of God using discernment mm-hmm. in order to minister to a sister, to help her out of that area. That's the beginning of it. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. 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 But I think that you have to put your, put yourself, you have to put yourself in her, in her shoes. Mm-hmm. How would you feel if you were if you were going, if you were in a situation where you felt worthless yeah. and there was no one that you can talk to, no one ever, ever encouraged you. Mm-hmm. No one was ever there to support you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you see someone going through that. Yeah. Your heart will go out to them yeah. and yeah. be able to take them by the hand and say, I- I'm going to be with you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to walk with you. Yeah. So. That's good. That's good. Gosh, I don't even know what to add to that other than really just to kind of reiterate what you've already said. It's just that as far as women honoring the um, the value of other women, Mm -hmm. I think it's just that constant reverence 
and respect of and just recognizing that okay this is my sister mm -hmm. but god lives in her yeah she the holy spirit is residing in her let me respect her she's a temple of she's a the dwelling place of god himself so if god is if i see the god in you then i'm going to naturally want to respect you and honor you and love you and take care of you and have your back and yes. stuff like that and i think i think for me that's something that i can do better i think i can think, grow in that area because as an introvert i'm tempted to kind of live you know in my own circle like you were saying in my own little space and not venture out so for me it takes an extra little bit of an effort to go to even my sister even to build her up mm. but i have to i think that's something that i can um take from this bible study and work on and be just become better at reaching out and just to uplift yeah. just to encourage just to say a kind word people people do that for me and lot. even the handmaids that the virtuous woman had i don't think those women were surrounded by her just because they were assigned to be her hand i believe that she had a relationship with those women Obviously. and and an example so when they went out they they could venture and do the same things that they saw her doing yes that she was an, an example she was a mentor yes and I, yes. that's well, that's it, Sheila. We have to be a mentor. Okay. Yeah. We have to be a mentor. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, that was, can you say that, that, that the handmaid's job was to be with her? They were assigned to her. But I feel that she, should, she could have had a relationship with them. I, yeah, I would imagine that it was not only, you know, a working relationship, but they were drawn to her character. Yes. I mean, how can you work? It's like people, I would imagine people who work for Oprah, mm -hmm. they don't, they're not just working for Oprah because they have a paycheck. They see a woman who's wise yes. and who's kind and who's intelligent. And so they, they, they gravitate towards that. I would, I would think that it's the same with um, a wise and virtuous woman yeah. that, you know, people are going to be drawn to the character, to yes. the virtue within you, because it's really not the virtue within us. It's God yes. and his virtue and his goodness shining through us. And I think that's um, what the whole passage just embodies, just a woman who is surrendered to God and how God can take every area of your life and just shine through to other people and situations, your community, workplace. And when we're seeking that, we're just going up, 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 higher, higher, higher. That's right. That's yeah. right. I know in my life, you know, we both have our mothers. Yes. I have a, a spiritual mom who, who um, really um, imparted words of wisdom to me. Mm -hmm. And so whether you are um, a spiritual mom or you're looking for someone to be that, um, that um, spiritual person in your life who can help navigate who can help you navigate through this life with um, a word of wisdom? I would see. I would if I uh, I would suggest or pray that God would lead you to the person who um, could be in your life hmm. to help um, lead you down um, that spiritual road mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. being a virtuous woman mm -hmm. because we are. Um, the, the wisdom that we have is not for ourselves. Right. We have to share that. And then through the next generation, we look at our daughters, mm -hmm. what we've imparted to them. Mm -hmm. And then they'll impart it to their daughters yes. and to their daughters. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not, you, you're not one and done. Nope. You're not one and done. Yeah, this is a generational thing. And I love the way you talked about spiritual mothers. And I was just having the conversation over the weekend with someone about my spiritual mom now i feel extremely blessed i know you are too because we have great biological moms yes. and we have great spiritual moms yes so i feel like i'm kind of 
I'm thankful. So that, that, that actually makes me have more of a responsibility mm -hmm. because I have a, a, a biological mom who is very wise, but I also have a spiritual mom who, even as a woman in her fifties, I can call yes. and run situations by her and she'll say, okay, well, let's talk about this. And she can really get into my thinking and really kind of get to the point, like you, what you were saying before about how sometimes a wise woman can say something to you and you might not necessarily want to hear it at first, mm -hmm. but you just know who's speaking That's right. and you know who's speaking through her, mm -hmm. that it would be who you <laughs> <laughs> to listen to what- What's that word? Who? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> to to um to listen That's because right. I've been in situations where you know I've had to call my spiritual mother my spiritual mentor run a situation by her and she would tell me to do something that I absolutely did not want to do yeah mm -hmm. she would tell me um to do something that was humbling yeah or something that was scary and she would remind me that okay um god is with you in this too i'm trying i want to give an example but that means i have to get personal um this is a safe place okay. it's a safe place so this is the example and it's really it's kind of simple we were planning a family trip to um my husband wanted to go to new york city and now i'm from new york <laughs> I, I grew up on an <laughs> island right outside of New York City. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I was afraid to go because I, when you grow up in outside, right outside of New York City, you also know the, the dark side of New York City. Okay. And this was when our um, sons were younger. And so I was, I had allowed fear to grip me. And I had told my husband, you know, I ain't going because I don't, I'm not taking my sons to, to New York City. And I know what Rikers is like. I'm talking like a New Yorker. And I ain't Bring going. Bring the accent. Say it. Say it. I ain't, I ain't going. And I know where Best Star is. And I went, I'm not going. I'm not going to New York. I'm not going to vacation. I'll go to Disneyland. You want to go to Disneyland? You want to go to Orlando? We're not, I ain't, I'm not doing New York. Y'all hear the accent. Y'all hear the accent. I'm not taking my baby boys to New York on vacation. I didn't want to do that because I was afraid for them because I, I know New York has some, mm -hmm. some rough stuff. So I called my spiritual mom and told her about this. And she was like, basically told me, um, no, go, go on the family <laughs> trip. And I was like, Bleh. like, no, she didn't just tell me to just do that. Like, and it wasn't a whole lot of debate. It wasn't a whole lot of like, well, why? Let me listen to how you feel. And mm -hmm. I, it was, no. Mm -hmm. What well, I go, say? No, go, go. Right. Your husband wants to go. Go. And guess what? God lives in New York too. What? <laughs> do, do you realize he lives there too? <laughs> so that's what I did. Yes. I was, but I was upset at first. Yeah. I didn't let her know that. No, no, no. Right. But I was upset at first. I was like, dang, you know, my little feelings were hurt. But I was, uh, I said, I'm going to be obedient because my commitment to my spiritual mom is I'm going to be obedient because I've seen God work wonders. So I'm going to be obedient. So we went on the trip and actually we had a good trip. Okay. And my son was fine. Yeah. He was shopping. He had a ball. Oh, he had a really wonderful time. But this is the thing that I feel like God allowed this to happen to let me see that he could take care of my son. Yeah. So we're walking through Penn Station. And as soon as we get in Penn Station, my son is just walking and this man just comes up to him, just talking smack, like all up, you know, people in New York don't care, all up in his face, talking smack, like, and my son, bless his heart, he's like, I'm trying to think he's like maybe 19 now. He's just walked straight ahead and ignores the man, which is what you're supposed to That's do in New York. That's right. You don't engage people like that in New York. You keep it moving <laughs> and you walk. And that's what my son did. Look at that. And he, I didn't have to say one word to him. He knew what to do. He handled that situation with so much dignity and strength. Like he was a native New Yorker. I was that's like, right. Yeah. Like he knew what was up. And it just was like God just showing me 
yes, I can take care of your children. I can take care of your sons, New York, Maryland, wherever you wherever. are. And you can follow spiritual wisdom and mentorship mm -hmm. and you don't have to be afraid. That's right. I got you. And there's the other thing. If you, if you ask someone to be your spiritual mentor, then you got to be ready for everything. You do. And that's just like reading Proverbs 31. This is wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to read it, then you got to be ready yeah. to follow the word. Yes, yes. You got to be ready for it. And, and I love it how, you know, your mom is a great woman of wisdom. We have spiritual moms. We got, we have great sisters. You know, I can call my, and my sister's 10 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And I call and ask her for advice yes. or I'll say certain things. And she says, now, Kathy, now, you know, and I'm like, but I'm older than you, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. she gives, and she's a mighty woman of God. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I sit under her wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. I sit under her wisdom and yeah. I'm just blessed. You know what? I'm, I'm so blessed about all of this because I've gained a new sister. <laughs> her name is Vicky. I got a sister. Yeah, her name is Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what, and what, she thinks she bad. I know I'm bad. Okay, that was that was. That what we wanted to do is that when when we started and when we first met, we just sat, yeah, and talked, and that's exactly what we wanted to bring to you all tonight. This is yeah. just, this is us. This, this is really us. us. This is <laughs> how we This talk. is us. <laughs> yeah. And you know, we said a whole lot more. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I really believe that um, what we shared tonight is um, what has been on our hearts mm -hmm. and, and what mm -hmm. has taken us, what brought us to the place we are, yeah. we are right now. Yeah. And um, we didn't even get to the part, the, the part where um, where it says about beauty, that's not saying oh, that you can't be pretty. That could be part two. Mm -hmm. My huh? gosh. Beauty. Yes. It says charm is deceitful. It and is. beauty is vain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. That's a whole that, discussion. That's, that's a whole. <laughs> Can we come back? Can we come back? Listen, I'm definitely not going to say no. This, this was such a rich conversation. So listen, I literally just asked the ladies and see if any, I don't know if anybody had a chance to respond, but y'all can respond to this. And then we have some questions for you all too. Uh -oh. So I asked the ladies, does anybody know what code switching is? You know, in the workplace, that's uh -huh. code switching, right? So do y'all know what code switching yes. is in the workplace? What's code switching in the workplace? Okay. So my kids tease me about okay. this. What, what's code so switching? When, when I'm at home mm -hmm. and they're not doing something, what do you mean? You need to get this up. Well, and then the phone room. Hello. Exactly. Right. Hi. Yes. Right. This is Kathy. How are you? Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then mommy, did you know what you just did? Right. You call switch, And they say, right? you're not that nice. Oh, okay. They'll say, so, I got it. Yes. I got so, it. so we say it. So we at work, right? We had to teach you while we know all this diversity, equity, inclusion, and these courageous conversations. We had to teach our non-melanated uh, colleague huh? what code switching was because there's this whole <laughs> talk about bring your whole self to work. And as African-Americans and black people were like, we don't bring our whole selves to work. There's a right. coach, so we had coach, which we had explaining to him, right? Right. So in this environment, I just have to acknowledge we had some code switching happen. Did y'all know y'all first lady was straight out of New York? Did y'all hear it? Did y'all, when she started talking about New York, right? All of New York showed up. All of New York showed up. When she's here with us, we get a little bit more Maryland. So she, she simmers it down for us, right? But don't be fooled. I loved no. it. I loved it. We did no. too. We loved, I loved it. Listen, we were here for it. We were like, oh, bring New York all the time. I am, bring, I am did y'all hear the accent? Yeah. It was the accent. It was the every, mannerism. Every, it was all of it. It was like, oh, come on, I New loved York. It. Oh, no, I need to go back to, be, go back back to being no, 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 no. We like it all. We like it all. Because we like it all, but we like my New York I might need that New York sister. Sometimes we need some New York. I'm going to <laughs> so look, so we only have a few minutes, but we have some questions for you guys. This was oh see, I would you say Asha? Asha said, look, Asha, Asha's like, I've seen her do it. <laughs> that is straight from the daughter. The daughter has seen her thing, and she was like, Don't play. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted that you want to be a virtuous woman, but you can be straight out of the That's right. So, and you That's can right. Get it too. You can get it. So listen, so we have some questions. This was absolutely 
fantastic. We are still chewing on so much of what you guys shared. Um, and so one of the main things that, that have come up, there was a there was something that, and I would say Camilla, uh, I think Camilla Buckner put something in chat that she wanted to challenge the ladies on. If you want to put that in the general chat, because I think that was something you wanted to share with all the ladies, please do that. I wanted to use a few minutes of time that we have for a recurring thing that was coming up. And it was about, I don't trust women, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember, as I said, this study was born out of First Baptist Church of Glen Arden's Queen Esther ministry, right? Mm -hmm. And I was a part of that ministry when it first started. And I remember in our first, like first couple of sessions, the women that were in there were like 12 of us who started 12, 15, something like that. And two of the women specifically, and there's still one is still in our group. She was like, I don't do women. I don't do women, right? But she was in this women's group. But that is something that you hear um, multiple in multiple places, right? What are your thoughts around that when when women who have been hurt for her, perhaps by other women on various things, what advice would you give for women like, I just don't trust women. I don't trust, I have trust issues. I'll let you go. Oh, wow. See, the Lord is leading you. Because I'm, I'm the, the picture girl of, for that. Because in eighth grade, I was jumped. See, back then they called it jumped. Mm -hmm. But it really, now they would call it, what, assault and battery. Mm -hmm. When somebody basically it waits for you after school and just basically beats you down. Mm -hmm. So a group of girls in eighth grade did that to me and one of my one of my friends and I will tell you that from that experience that that will make you not trust women mm -hmm. because I can honestly say I didn't do anything to these women some of them I didn't even know who they were it may have just been a, a situation where I don't know I was dating somebody they wanted to date or maybe my clothes were nicer or whatever but they didn't like me and they let me know it. Mm -hmm. So in terms of getting past that, I would say that's a process. Mm -hmm. And I will be honest and say that even in church, I, I expect, oh gosh, being a pastor's wife and not trusting women, it's like crazy yeah. because you're called to love the women of the church. Yeah. How can you love, how can I love the women of the church and I don't trust them because I'm carrying a literal scar. Yeah. I have a literal scar up here from that, wow. from eighth grade. Wow. So I had scars here yeah. in, on my soul yeah. from something that women did to me. But my spiritual mom, once again, have to give her props. I'm not going to say her name, but she once said to me, if you shut down all women because of what those what has happened in your past what a woman did to you years ago you shut down all the love that women in your future and in your present oh, are good. gonna show you yeah. that's good so you gotta let that go yeah. and so that was a that's a process for me <clears throat> and that's something that i always have to check myself on but the at the end of the day i would have to say as, I, as we grow and mature and we recognize that woman, man, boy or girl, whatever people do to us, that we have that rock in Jesus yeah. and that he will cover us, protect us, fight for us. Yes. See, I'm not in eighth grade anymore. No, you're not. I know that God will fight for me. Yes. So if you come for me, you do so at your own detriment ah. so i don't have to be afraid yeah i can walk in grace and i can be like your mom said i can be who i am, who I am. so it takes time it takes prayer it takes people challenging it just takes being honest mm -hmm. with myself mm -hmm. with yourself no i don't trust women they hurt me mm -hmm. they beat me down mm -hmm. they they scratch my face up mm -hmm. and i ain't do nothing to them right but it takes time to just, we got to let that stuff out, grieve it, acknowledge it, but just understand that for every woman that did something bad, there's like two, three, four, 10, 25, 100 that are going to do something wonderful and loving. So now I can receive love from Kathy yes. and from Michelle and from Shannon and Sheila and from my own daughter yes. because of God and his grace. And he makes me strong he gives me courage and i can rely on him to protect me and to make me the woman 
who's loving enough that I can even love women who don't even like me. Yeah. Wow. So come on with yes. it. Yes. You don't like me. I love you. Right. <laughs> I love you. And then they can't even verbalize why they don't like you. Hey. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So it's all right. Mm -hmm. It's all right. That was so that was, much that's, wisdom, right? That's it. And I'll, you know, one of the things that you talked about earlier is when we were talking about the whole reality TV, right? And you said, well, I don't, I don't, that's not my reality. Not my reality. This yeah. is who is in my reality, right? And so to that point, you know, and what you just shared is that one of the things that I think I've learned for myself is that whatever it is that I don't have, I try to curate it for myself. I create it, right? And so if it is that I need a support system of women and I don't see it, I, Shannon can tell you, I invite people into my circle and that also helps me to create boundaries in terms of the type of people that I want in my life, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's some of what we can also do. I know that Asha posted the link for small groups and like, do we call it small groups or life groups? Life groups, life groups, life groups at Zion. Um, and so that's a really great starting point. And so to that point earlier is that there are actually a lot more women that are probably along the space of women that you can trust, mm -hmm. but it is a process. It is. And to that, I think some of the things that are deep wounded hurts for us are things that we've talked about before on Red Lip Diary is that there are some things that you do need to seek out a professional counselor to help you to, as First Lady Vicky said, to process through it. Mm -hmm. Because some of that stuff can be so wounding to you that you need somebody to help you in a safe way unpack it. Because if you try to, sometimes some of this stuff, you try to unpack it by yourself, you don't have the tools for what you're getting ready to dig up. And so I think that's something that's important for us. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all, this was so good. I do have like, maybe we have like five more minutes, right? I have a couple more questions for y'all that I wanted to throw that came up. One of the things that, um, that I love that you talked about, I think Kathy, you may have brought this up or maybe first lady Vicki, but Proverbs 18, 22, it said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord, right? So I heard this man say this on, I tell y'all about the gospel according to TikTok. Y'all know I be on TikTok. Oh, boy. Right? TikTok, TikTok. All night like, long. I'm going to TikTok, going to TikTok. All okay, night I'm long. Doing most, right? And so this, this guy, he's a pastor on, I think he's a pastor. And he broke it down in a different way that I just hadn't heard it and understood it before. But he was, he said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And then he says, and obtains and. favor from the Lord, yeah. right? So there was this understanding as he was unpacking it to says, you know, until he, for a man anyway, let's say in that, in that space, that un unless he finds that wife, there is a level of favor that he is not even tapping into, right? That's just him, right? But then what that says to me as a woman is that as you were talking about rubies, is that there is a level of favor on my life, whether I'm married or I'm not married, that I possess. Yes. That whether, who, whether it is in that space, I have it, I possess it. So when you were talking about that space of I am virtue, is no matter where I am, that there's that virtue that lives in us. So I love that part of Proverbs 18, 22. And then you can go along the same levels about um, the virtuous woman because of her, her husband is blessed, her children are blessed, mm -hmm. her businesses are blessed, whatever mm -hmm. she sets her hands to mm -hmm. will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Because of her worth that she's worth rubies mm -hmm. and what she hasn't. So we, you know, it says about a husband obtaining favor. But I really believe that if we embody all of the, the um, characteristics and the wisdom that God said, whatever we touch, wherever we go, even though you go there every day to your job and you don't like it, your job is blessed because you're there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get out your car every morning, especially now since you've been teleworking the last six months and you got to go in there. But mm -hmm. just because you ride into the garage and walk into your agency, your company is blessed because of who you are in Christ because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of your value that mm -hmm. fried you chicken that you fry for whoever it's blessed so so as Sheila comes because we're getting ready to close out I can't believe we're like close to time already wow. Sheila's sitting over there like now nah, we got another hour <laughs> she's just over there chilling so one other thought that I, I wanted to to pose to you all like really come on Sheila <laughs> 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 
bless our heart. So one of the things I thought about is just our mindset, right? Yeah. How do we stand in our own way in terms of our thinking that we're not enough, we're not doing enough, whether it's the workplace, the home, parenting, family, and friendships? What are your thoughts, you know, in that space about how as women, we often stand in our own way because of what we are feeding ourselves mm -hmm. about ourselves and that we're not enough, we're not good enough, or we're not doing enough. How do you guys contend with that in your own lives? It, it's something that I think about every day, mm -hmm. um, especially when when I think about my children. Mm -hmm. You know, I say, "Well, did I raise them well? Mm -hmm. You know, did I teach them enough? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, do they? What do they think about me as a mom? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I some I get in my head. I get in my head a lot, thinking that I could have done more, mm -hmm. but I have I have to realize that. Well, first. When it comes to children, and we all, as mothers, we know that they don't come with they don't come with instruction manuals. Mm -hmm. They just have different. exactly. Mm -hmm. They're all different. But even though that there are things that we miss, it doesn't mean that we have become a failure. Mm -hmm. And you can't beat yourself up mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, I second guess myself a lot. Mm -hmm. I do, mm -hmm. but. Um, I have to believe that what I have done is good enough mm -hmm. and that I'm still good enough. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I can't measure myself from somebody else's standards. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why we don't, that's why you can't read the comments. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can't read the comments. You can't read the comments and you can't bring that into your space mm -hmm. because if you, if you start, um, if you start framing your, your reference, if that's your reference from someone else's mindset, mm. you never, you never, you never attain, you you never reach that level mm -hmm. because everybody's opinions change. Mm -hmm. yeah. They change every minute. Absolutely. So, I have to just like my mom said, I have to believe I am I'm good enough how I am, mm -hmm. and if no one else accepts it, then that's their problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. First lady Vicky, any additional thoughts for you in terms of how do you manage through whether it's daily or seasonal or what have you um the thoughts sometimes or maybe they don't come um, that you're not doing enough or not good enough or all the different thoughts that kind of swarm in our heads as women the thoughts come from me a lot mm -hmm. and i for me i think they stem from compare comparing myself to other women yeah and I always have to remind myself that I'm not called to compare myself to other women yeah. because I'm not called to run another woman's race. Mm -hmm. I'm not called to do another woman's job. I'm not called to be, be another woman's husband's wife. I'm not called to raise her children. I'm not called to have her job. I'm not called to her position. I'm called to one position, one husband, one church, one family. And so if I, I'm, I struggle with this always comparing myself to other women. And yeah. that's where for me, the root of the, the feelings of I'm not good enough yeah. come from. Mm -hmm. It's because I'm looking over at another woman mm -hmm. thinking, Oh, well, she's doing this and she's got this. And, and I don't, mm -hmm. I must not be good enough, mm -hmm. but that's not from God. Yeah. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. That's not how he, deals with us as his daughters mm -hmm. he really speaks to us lets us know how much he loves us yeah. asks us to follow him mm -hmm. and to live our lives out of that love mm -hmm. of his love for us and our response yeah. mm -hmm. it's it's kind of simple mm -hmm. and i think when i start comparing myself to other women i i kind of complicate it i think i yeah. i Pastor Joy gave me the opportunity to talk about this on one of her other, um, her story. Yes. Yeah. And I talked about how I would always compare myself to other pastor's wives. Oh, wow. And so this, that's like, cause you know, there's some pastor's wives out there who can pastor the church, sing all the music. They can run, they can do the children's choir. They can do everything. And I always have felt like, well, I don't know how to do any of that stuff, but I just feel like at this stage in my life, um, I, my honest estimation of myself, and I think it's a, it's a fair estimation, is that God placed me here because 
he he gave me what I needed to be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't maybe I don't have the showy gifts, you know, the gifts that get all the attention and the gifts that like, you know, I can't sing, I can't preach, I can't do any of that stuff. But maybe God placed me here because I really do know how to pray. Yeah. And I really will intercede for you. And God will hear <laughs> mm -hmm. my prayers. Or because I'm really gonna like like you and love you and be nice to you. And um maybe God has given me just something that's not showy and not fabulous and fantastical, but is good enough for this ministry, for this time, for the, these people, for this husband. And I rest in that. That's where I, that's what I rest in. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm so wonderful, because I know I'm not. Like I said, I compare myself to other people. And I'm like, well, I can't do all that. But I rest in like, no, God has placed me here yeah. and he created me and I'm growing and I'm becoming, becoming. like Michelle Obama, becoming. <laughs> yes. And as I'm doing that, and if I'm following him, responding to his love yeah. every day of my life, that's good enough. Mm, so I good. just want you to know you're wonderful, though. You're so sweet. See, I love you, Kathy. <laughs> you this are is wonderful. why you have to have friends like this. You're wonderful. You gotta have, you gotta have friends who build you up. That means a lot no. coming from you because you're wonderful yourself. Thank you. So <laughs> good. So good and so rich. And so Sheila's coming. Um, oh and goodness. we have just like, I think this will be one of those sessions, just like all the others, that we want to end up probably going back to YouTube because the replays are available on YouTube to go back and reflect on because there was so much meat that was shared tonight from the prodigal woman. The prodigal woman. Good Lord. That's prodigal a woman. woman. Prodigal That's woman. Prodigal 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 in that mm. space of you don't have to keep trying to attain, attain. Mm -hmm. That's that right. is not who your virtue is. But one of the things that you even just shared in terms of when we do this whole comparison thing yeah. is that the recipe that God is creating with you is not the recipe not of the woman that's over here. Sure. So when we start trying to compare ourselves to the woman that's over here, why are you adding chicken to your dish? And I said, we were making salmon. Well, right? mm. And so <laughs> that ends up complicating the right. recipe that God is trying to use us to, to be able to share. And so um, tonight, mm. anything that you want to add, Sheila Varner? What did you say your mother said? Be who? Be be who you are. Be who you are. Not who somebody. Not what somebody, not else, what wants somebody else wants you to be. Mm -hmm. I love that because I, I've even had mm -hmm. you know people say to me, um, "Why are you always so happy? Mm -hmm. You know why? Why you act? <laughs> why you act like that? You know?" And that's just who I am. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And maybe maybe I'm happy to help you be happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and and I just can't. I, I just can't, I can't not be right. who I am. Who you are mm -hmm. It's just me. Mm -hmm. Right. And it is, it's real. It's whoever real you, <laughs> whoever you are, whoever, that's whoever who he meant for you to be, that's who you be. That's who so you I are. like the fact of the recipe, be your own recipe. Absolutely. Your own Don't recipe. be anybody else's recipe. And then the other one that really is for me is that virtuosity. I love that new Oh, word. my gosh. So, okay. They were like, like that chat with that virtuosity. whole terminology. So maybe you see me like walking through the halls of Zion and say, Virtuosity. virtuosity and, and i know you watch red love diary and we didn't even look at the definition <laughs> of virtuous <laughs> well no i don't know but we made it one virtuosity. but virtuous means having or showing high moral standards mm. <laughs> so that means mm. if you if you are a virtuous woman and you stand for god then that means you're not you are not trying to um that you're not putting putting aside what you know is right in order to make somebody else happy. There you go. Be. Yeah. Yep. And sometimes we lay our morals down because we want to be in with certain people mm -hmm. or do certain things. Or a certain person. Or a certain yes, a person. person. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. Yes. But you can't, that that's a part of being virtuous. Yeah. It's not laying down your morals. Yeah, it is not laying down your integrity, it's, but it standing is. for God. Mm -hmm. And because you are following, um, that you are following the wisdom of God, that's when 
you shall call you. They, everyone will call you blessed. Call you blessed. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone will call you blessed. I love that. And so, the other part is too about um, just women building up each other. Yeah. So I do encourage you to join a life group, but if it doesn't start there, a friend builds a friend yeah. and builds a friend. I think it's so important for sisterhood where women come together and become friends and know each other and love each other. It just creates a whole di- different atmosphere when you it walk does. into the room and we can all laugh, act crazy like I love to act crazy here. But it's it's a sisterhood and a, and a womanhood and a friendhood. And so I say to all women there, that is so key. Is. Life just becomes so easy when you can smile. Who we play smile? Here she go. All right, before she goes to her song. <laughs> so as, we, as we prepare to close out, because I know we're just a little bit over time. Yes. We do give our facilitators the opportunity only if they would like to share if there are other ways on social media that um, you would like for that people could come along and follow if you want. But it's not mandatory at all. But if you like to share that, you can. So any of the um, things. Or I am on anything. Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Do you I know can't. Your handle? I, I sure don't. We'll send but if it you out. Put, okay. We'll send <laughs> it out. If you put we'll Kathy Jenkins and Kathy um, with a. Came. There you go. J J E F F E R I E S. Yeah. What? She makes cake pots. I'm a cake baker. Kathy's cakes. Kathy's so cakes. Good. And can I say it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So, I don't know what it is, but yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so, so, you say wrong, so Thanksgiving Day last year, mm-hmm. I released my first single. <gasps> Did. Congratulations. And it's called Bright Side. Okay. And um I wrote it in honor of my dad. There's a um there's an old church song. I don't know if you remember. There's a bright side somewhere. Do y'all remember hearing that song? There's, there's, there's a, bright a bright side somewhere. somewhere. Yes. yes. Yeah. And during the pandemic, you know, we were at home a lot and you know, things mm-hmm. were just chin. I said, God, something's got to come out of this. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a bright side of that. Oh, of that's so good. So check it out. So we'll send um, the link. We'll get the yeah. link from you. We'll send out the recap email. We'll sure. put that in there. Oh, sure. Yes, Custom sure. cakes, cake pops. Mm-hmm. Sing a little bit. <laughs> okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh gosh. And then okay, so what anything you want to share? You good to go? I'm good to go. Okay. Perfect. And if you need to get if you need to get in touch with her, you can come by my, my social media and I'll tell her that. Right. I'll tell Vicky that you. Right. And I will yeah. tell you, uh, Vicky, this is what your daughter up here, she'll go find out. somebody said, Latanya Bullock mm-hmm. said, Auntie V, you are the backbone of one of the greatest pastors in all. Absolutely. You are an inspiration to so many of us. She said, We are your V Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that is wonderful. That is so I love me. that. That was oh, very oh, thank you for that encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we like the beehive. We like the beehive. That is incredible. All right. Love it. So love next, it. next week, next Thursday, Sheila is going to got? be Martha and Mary. Yep. Who is that? Wooten and yes. Williams. Yes. And I don't know if you're Martha or Mary. I know I'm Martha. I think I you're got, both sometimes. <laughs> I, I think you flow. I got to get it done. Too. I think I'm a Martha. I won't, I'll catch Jesus in a moment, but I got to get your dinner first. <laughs> then I'm going to sit at your feet. And, <laughs> and you'll know I'm a Mary because I'm like, I ain't doing all that. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm Martha. I'm, I'm running, Martha. All, I'm I'm running Martha. all over I'm the place. I'm Michelle, That's me. You? Probably more Martha. Yeah. Yes. 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 So come back next week yes. as we prepare and you can kind of unpack, are you a Mary or Martha? And then not only, you know, understanding, are you a Mary or Martha? How do you support the person that is the Mary or Martha in mm. your life as well? I think okay. that's also important. Okay. Um, if one of you wonderful women would pray us out. Yes. If you feel so inclined. Okay. I'll pray. Thank you. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this time that we're able to gather together as sisters, oh God. God, we ask that you would continue just to pour your wisdom upon us, oh God, and that you would help us as we uh, navigate through this life, that we would use your wisdom, um, whether we are 
um, wives um, or we're single with our children, with our jobs. Oh, God, we are open to the wisdom that you have for us. God, we thank you for Red Lip Diary that we're able to come together. We thank you for all of the facilitators for Joy, Michelle and Sheila. And we ask, oh, God, that you would just continue to be with us, oh, God, and and remind us that we are worth our worth is in you, oh, God, that we are worth rubies and help us remember that we should attain to be a worth, um, that we should live our lives in the worth that you have caused us to be. So God, we ask that you continue to bless us and keep us. And God, let us come back next week yeah. so we can learn more mm-hmm. about you yeah. in your word. We thank you. And we, oh, and God, I thank you for my sister, Vicki. Yes, oh God, no, thank, thank you. you for our first thank lady. God, for thank you for placing her in our lives and yes, in our God. church. Continue to bless her as she stands by our pastor, oh God. Yes. And we thank you, oh God, just for this mm. opportunity to come together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So everybody, we thanking Aunt Cat Cat. <laughs> We're thanking Auntie V. Absolutely. With the V-Hive. <laughs> 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 <laughs>